Welcome to Gaia's Love, a podcast of brief messages to help humanity bridge the gap to the new earth. My name is Vivian Gerard. It is my delight to be a scribe for consciousness today, sharing the wisdom that flows through from source. Here we go. episode 341. It is Friday here in Cincinnati. It is cool outside, gray, kind of misty. I think we're supposed to get some rain. And then tomorrow it's supposed to be 75 and sunny. So we are, we are hopefully coming out of these uh, sort of more wintry spring days and moving into proper spring in the way that we experience it here. Everything is green and starting to bloom and oh, it's just so pretty. Today is May 1st and that date is significant for many because I believe the stay at home requirements have been, many have been guided around this date of May 1st. And so I arrive with this theme for today, this word that popped in just a little while ago, of discerning. Discerning, it's such a cool word. I looked up the definition right before starting the podcast because I'm like, what does this actually mean? If I were to look up the definition, I don't know that I have the Google Wikipedia (laughs) Webster definition. And it says to use good judgment to... Um, distinguish with the senses the best choice or the best way forward. Yeah, and I feel like that is exactly where I am, where all of us are. That's not true. It's where I am. And so I'll share my experience, and I'm sure there are many matches for those who are listening, but everyone around the world is really in their own process with coronavirus and some countries are further down the path than what the United States is and some are perhaps behind where we are. And so I trust when you hear this it's because this message of discerning is resonating with you and there um, there is something that you are also moving through Uh, identifying good judgment (laughs) about okay so from my perspective let's see when we first started the quarantine it was for a couple weeks I talked about this last week and then it was extended for a little longer and then it was May 1st and so here we are May 1st and there's another stay at home extension that's been put in place for Ohio with uh, the caveat that says there are some exceptions to it. (laughs) Then they start to describe, you know, some of the ways that we're going to reopen our economy and our world and our activities. And so discerning feels really important. Um, The legal, um, governmental, political decisions are being discerned by those that we elected into leadership. And so they are making very broad, widespread decisions for large communities, you know, millions of people, for example, here in Ohio. And so they're discerning based on volume, based on mass, what is most going to serve all of us, the health of all of us. And so then we move down through the state into our local city, and the city is having decision-making processes for what most serves Cincinnati here in our community. To take it even further down, you know, there's the school districts. My husband works for the Cincinnati Public School District, and so they're making decisions about what serves their community. My son goes to the school district here in our neighborhood, and so they're making decisions my daughter with university, you know, all of these uh, smaller level communities are also discerning at a leadership level what most serves. 
And then there's the home, there's the family. You know, within each of our homes, we are discerning what most serves our immediate flow of energy here within this family. And right now, that is my husband, myself, and our two children, and our two pets. <laughs> you know, that is our nuclear family, and we are making decisions based on what most serves all of us, what's good judgment for right now. And then it's all the way into the individual. So what most serves me? What, how do I discern for myself what next steps are in the highest alignment for my optimal health of my mind, body, spirit? So wherever you find yourself in that placement, and perhaps you're at an even bigger perspective, you know, you're looking at it from a country or from the whole globe, if that's the way that you're experiencing this coronavirus. Wherever you find yourself in that, the judgment, the decisions that are made are um, shifting based on the priorities of that community. So for example, a governor who is focused on a state, he's looking at the economy, at the funding, at the health, the health systems, the education systems. He's looking at, we have a he governor, which is why I'm using the word he. <laughs> Some states have she governors and they're all so awesome. There's this big picture that they're exploring and they're receiving lots of information so that they can discern best judgment for this big picture. When we come all the way down to our family here in my house, what we are discerning as a family, right, is what's going to bring us peace of mind What's going to help us stay calm and still feel connected and loved and safe and happy? What activities are, are um, most important to us? Is it exercise? Is it conversations with our friends, our family, our extended family? Is it honoring celebrations? Today would have been my niece's graduation. And so last night we made plans to do a little driveway drop-in and say hello and celebrate her. We have priorities in our family structure, and so we discern for ourselves as a unit what, what is in the highest alignment moving forward. Why do I say all of this? Because I feel like the... Well, let me do a bigger picture look at this. I believe that this virus has brought awareness has offered humanity the opportunity to become aware of how we are experiencing our human journey, how we are investing our time or wasting our time, and then we judge what's investing and what's wasting, how we're experiencing optimal health of mind, body, spirit, the optimal health of our mind, as a humanity, what is the mind of humanity focusing on? And is that the optimal health for all of us, for our minds, our bodies? What is the optimal health of the body of humanity in relation to the body of earth? How do we optimize the health of our body as a global humanity and as individuals within that humanity? This virus is bringing up awareness. It's showing us the places where we have weakness in our health system, where we have weakness in our bodies, which uh, population within our humanity need our support because they are the weakest, right? They are the, the well, like, for example, so much focus is on the elderly. The elderly, they, the awareness of their health, their physical health, we are actually identifying, becoming aware of how we impact the health of the elderly, how we co-create, how germs spread and don't spread, how the physical body is weaker as, as we age. Can we honor that weakness? Can we partner with the elderly to support them more in their weaker uh, stages of life? 
and this is a general statement, not all elderly are in a weakened state. Some elderly individuals could kick my butt <laughs> easily. <laughs> and yet there are many in the population, the global humanity, where the body is weaker. And so this virus has brought awareness of the optimal health. How do we as a whole humanity support all, uh, all levels of health of the body? How do we engage and co-create? And then the soul. What is the optimal health of our soul as a humanity? Like, oh, if you tap into that, what is the soul of humanity right now? collective vibration what are we focusing on what are we experiencing you know the word that comes to mind is hollow like are we actually playing in the joy and the bliss of being the soul in the human body at a collective level this virus is bringing our awareness to that what would the optimal health look like of the soul of humanity. I can feel how confusing that question might be for some, so let me say it again with emphasis. If the soul of humanity, S-O-U-L, if the soul of humanity was thriving, was functioning at its highest optimal level, what would humanity feel like? What would the words be that would come to mind if, if we were to say, wow, like this virus has activated the highest potential of the soul of humanity. What would that feel like? Can you feel the exhilaration? The movement, the speed of the energy that would be flowing through humanity if the soul was activated, alive, flourishing, creating, loving, sharing, connecting, if the soul was on fire, <laughs> what would that feel like in humanity? It would feel cohesive. The soul of humanity would be united. It would be one energy. It would be all individuals loving and supporting and breathing and engaging with each other from this place of recognition like I know we are all connected I know we are all one how do we flourish and thrive together I don't believe we are there yet I don't believe we are very close to that yet but I do believe this virus is bringing awareness to how we aren't there yet how um, the words I want to say are how far we have to go <laughs> but that sounds heavy and defeated and I don't feel that way I feel very optimistic and very excited about where humanity is headed so what would a better word be this virus perhaps is bringing our awareness to the possibilities that we have been too busy to tap into. So what does that look like when we bring it from the collective, all of humanity level down to the individual? I believe individuals are starting to feel how out of alignment they are with the best life they could be living. How individuals, many individuals, are realizing where they have been spending their time is perhaps not where they most want to be spending their time. That if we look at our lives as a finite number of years, <laughs> this is a great example. There was something I read years ago. It was a story. I think my mom maybe sent it to me in guidepost. It was a story about this person who had a jar and they put pennies in it for every Saturday they thought they would have left in their life before they would die. So if they lived to, let's say, 90, this is how many Saturdays they had left. And so every week they would take a penny out of the jar. And it was a way to stay very in touch with or conscious with how much time they actually had left to experience in the human journey. That story is one illustration, <laughs> perhaps, 
<laughs> I feel like it's making the half the glass half empty become emptier <laughs> so to me it feels uh, kind of sad to look at it that way I prefer to look at it as right here right now in this moment am I enjoying this moment why even wait for a Saturday like am I living this moment to the highest potential of what I most want to be doing with my time and I believe many people are starting to tap into that for themselves is this job what I really want to be spending my week doing? Is there something else that I, I feel called to or feel inspired by? And how do I start aligning with that feeling, that calling? Because once we align with that calling, the energy of our soul, the excitement, the passion within us, it gets the system rumbling and moving inside. It's like slowly starting the engine back up inside of our mind, body, spirit. When the soul is like, oh, 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 they're paying attention. <laughs> the mind and the body are listening to me. What? What's that? I've been shut down for a long time. When the soul knows it's being heard, it very clearly starts to give the mind and the body these signals, these bursts of energy. Suddenly you're a little more motivated to walk outside or to sit in the sunshine or to call a friend and talk about your idea or do some Google research and suddenly there's this article that's explaining it in exactly the way that you were thinking it could be. You know, the, the soul works in these really cool micro ways when we allow space for the soul to start guiding illuminating, tapping, nudging, hitting us on the head, <laughs> knocking us down to the ground. Are you listening yet? <laughs> the soul is very powerful. And yet, when the mind is so busy and the body is so tired, it's, it's like the soul can knock and push, but the mind and the body are fatigued. Perhaps a good uh, explanation or a comparison would be the adrenal system. When your adrenal system is exhausted and overwhelmed, it doesn't matter if you receive excellent news or it's a beautiful sunshiny day or the birds are singing or your favorite friend is calling you. It doesn't matter if your adrenal system is fatigued. You can't receive the joy of that experience. You can't be fully present for it because you're depleted. You're exhausted. I feel like the soul of humanity as a collective has been very tired, very fatigued. And when we are fatigued in that way, it's easy to get a virus because the virus comes in to wake us up, to bring awareness. So here we are with this new awareness that we've had weeks to start to feel, move, experience. We've had lots of information and voices and stories and examples and data and rules and counter rules, <laughs> laughter at the rules. Like There's been so much information that has been able to come into our expanded awareness with this virus. It's like, um, it's like if you can imagine the virus sort of widens the viewfinder of your eyes and it allows you to see a little more than perhaps what you had seen before when you were in your tunnel, go to work, come home, take care of the kids, try exercise, maybe watch TV, get on Facebook, go to bed, get up the next day, start again, <laughs> right? Or whatever your flow of that was or perhaps still is. When we have this narrow tunnel focused vision and then this virus comes in collectively and starts to expand the viewfinder and our, our perspective, like when you are taking a driver's test and you see out of the left and the right corners of your eye when they do those flashes, suddenly our perspective is a little wider. We can see from the corners of our eyes there's little flashes of something new starting to show us perhaps we haven't been seeing everything when we've been in this tunnel vision. Perhaps there is a little more to see, but we haven't had time or the capacity for it. 
because we've been so focused. So this viewfinder expands our perspective a little bit. We start to see some of these flashes of new awareness and then we're perhaps confused by it or we're um, trying to understand it, discerning, right? We're discerning. Is that a good flash or a bad flash? Is that flash trying to tell me something? What is happening? As the viewfinder starts to expand, our system is able to take in more information. What is um, perhaps confusing about this time is that we are all discerning what is our unique flow of mind, body, spirit within us individually. If your mind and your body have been so busy and so focused in this tunnel vision and your system is fatigued and you're used to ignoring the signs or the nudges of the soul and just getting it done, getting through, keep on going, keep moving, another day tomorrow, right? All these things that we tell ourselves to stay on track. (laughs) If that has been your way of operating for years, perhaps most of your lifetime, and the soul is constantly shushed, when the mind and the body are tired, and then finally starting to get a little rest, perhaps, because you aren't working in the same pace, you've been forced to stay home, or um, your schedule is different than what it was, or maybe your children's activities you're not doing as many because all you have right now is just your job because the children aren't able to be in those activities or run back and forth to school or have all their friends over. If there's this extra space around you and your body is able to slow down and rest a little more, and your mind isn't managing quite as many tasks as it used to, this virus brings in this expanded awareness so that your viewfinder is a little bigger and you start getting these flashes in the corners of your eye. The learning curve or the discerning of what is that message wanting to come through? What is the voice of my soul that I haven't allowed space to communicate with me in a while because I've been so tired or so overwhelmed or so busy? We are learning how to communicate this inner communication, the mind, the body, and the spirit, the soul energy. We are consciousness, love, it's all the same feeling to me. We are learning how to uh, understand this inner dialogue. Because when the soul has space to be heard, or when the soul is welcomed into the conversation, the messages often are not immediately life-changing, right? The messages aren't, go out and save the world. (laughs) Go uh, create the greatest art, the next Michelangelo, (laughs) right? It's not usually that kind of a message. The soul, it's, it's going to guide your inner healing in the way that most serves you. And so what you may feel in those flashes of awareness or those guidance from this inner voice that is somewhat new to you or familiar but not quite trusted yet, the message may simply be just sit for a few minutes. Don't don't go do that project that you feel like you should do. Just sit in the sunshine and close your eyes for a few minutes. Take a rest. Because what the soul knows is the the optimal health is the harmony of mind and body and spirit together. It's not an overriding of one or the other. It's not the soul going, yes, 
you have to sit still now. I'm in charge, <laughs> right? I get to run the show. It's not like that. The soul is in a human body. And the only way the soul stays in that human body is if that human body stays healthy. And that human body cannot stay healthy if the mind is miserable or overwhelmed or overworked or spinning out of control. The body can't be healthy if that's what's happening in the mind. So all three have to play together, have to sit in the sandbox and be friends together. So what the soul is always going to do, always, when we listen to the soul, it is going to focus on what does the body and the mind need so that I can actually be part of this conversation. So what the soul may tell you is go take a nap. <laughs> go listen to music. Go play with your children or your grandchildren. Go walk outside. Go breathe fresh air. Oh, go take a nap again. <laughs> right? This is what the soul will tell you. It's not going to tell you go out and save the world. It's going to say take care of you first. Do what you most need first. And then once the body is stabilized or breathing, that's what the, the soul may say is breathe more deeply. <laughs> this always happens in my meditations. Breathe more deeply. Come into your body. <laughs> Be present. Right? Once, once our system breathes more slowly, when our body is breathing more slowly, our nervous system can start to heal. The nervous system relaxes. The adrenals don't have to be fatigued because they're not in fight and flight all the time. And when the body starts to heal, when the body is still and relaxed and at ease, <laughs> at ease, if you are not familiar with Louise Hay's book about You Can Heal Your Life, she talks about dis-ease. Dis-ease, it's where there is no ease in the body. And so disease results. So perhaps your whole focus from your soul is, let's bring the body into a state of ease. What would that look like for you? What would that feel like in you? And when the body is at ease, the mind, it can loosen its control, its grip. The mind can start to unravel. There's a great podcast recently called Unwinding, right? It's a few podcasts back if you need some support with your mind. Unwinding the stories, the patterns, the beliefs, the limitations, the judgments. <laughs> this is discerning right? Have we made good judgments? We tear ourselves apart in our minds, all the ways we've lived our lives wrong. <laughs> the soul would say, oh, you're so cute, right? You're, you're just trying to figure it out like every other soul in a human body is trying to figure it out. We're all here to, to master this mind, body, spirit. Sometimes we're in absolute flow and it's magical and everything is harmonious and sometimes it's the most disjointed, awkward, non-collaboration possible. And yet we're learning constantly. So when the body is at ease and the mind is starting to relax and be very accepting of this moment, of all the choices that led to right here and right now. That's when the soul can start to truly begin guiding the next phase of our journey. And this is the discerning that I most want to tap into with you. If we have been blessed with time in this quarantine period to truly rest our bodies, to bring our bodies to a state of ease. If we have allowed the spaciousness for the mind to wander down through all the different 
pathways that needed to be explored and unwind some of the stories that have been locked up inside of us. If we arrive here at this moment, May 1st, so for me, I'll talk about myself, for me here on May 1st in the state of Ohio, with the spaciousness of the schedule I have created for myself, my body is rested. My mind has been able to do a lot of unwinding. And so my soul is very clearly discerning what most serves next for me. And when I uh, identify that for myself and I calmly communicate that with my family, this immediate circle around me that I've been quarantining with, and my soul clearly knows like this experience needs to happen. This is what most serves me next. Um, this is a conversation I want to have. This is a person I want to see. This is a date I'd like to put on the calendar and anchor it in as an activity I'd like to experience. Whatever it is that my soul says this, and I communicate that to my community around me, the, the alignment of my optimal health of my mind, body, spirit, is so clear and I can communicate that with my immediate community they can take my clarity and then it informs their choices they can communicate to me their clarity and that informs my choices and this dialogue that is happening is so harmonious it's um, It's like what I'm trying to show about the collective soul of humanity all the way down to the individual soul of me, one human. When I have alignment and clarity in my mind, body, soul, and I start to share that and emanate that from my own discernment, I share that with those around me. That purity of my soul's guidance shifts the vibration of those around me. Their purity back to me shifts our collaboration. And so now we have this little pod, this little nucleus of energy that's in pure alignment that radiates out into our community collective vibration. So all of those with whom we interact in our neighborhood, in our school communities, in our friend communities, our family, And so from this pure alignment in our little pod, we are emanating this clarity out into the larger collective of humanity. This is how the soul of humanity is going to shift. This is how the hollowness that I sense of the soul of humanity is going to start to be filled up with joy, with creation, with love, with connection. It's not going to come from everyone around us forcing it down to the smallest level. It's starting within each one of us individually and expanding outward, rippling outward. It's like the pebble that gets dropped into the still lake. It's that first drop of movement that ripples all the way out, that can go all the way to the edges of the lake. It's not going from out in. It's going from inside us, emanating outwards to everybody else. So I say as clearly as possible, our individual process of discerning what's in alignment for me individually is going to be the way that this uh, awareness of this virus creates lasting change. It comes from within each one of us individually. So how do we begin? You begin by 
allowing your mind and your body to come to a state of ease by trusting the soul's guidance in all the little tiny nudges. Our souls are constantly giving us signs and aligning these synchronicities. And then we, our mind comes in and says, oh, that was nothing. <laughs> that wasn't real. Don't pay attention to that. Keep doing what you've been doing. <laughs> the, soul, the soul is um, very funny. The soul typically is going to get your attention in funny ways, in magical ways, in ways that the mind has to ponder and contemplate because they're not normal, right? I know I'm on track with clients when they use words like weird and crazy and uh, freaky. <laughs> when they use those words, I'm like, oh yeah, soul's in charge right now. <laughs> Soul is trying to get their attention. <laughs> and clearly the mind is resisting because the mind throws all these words of judgment at the soul. Okay, you're so crazy. You're so out there. <laughs> There's another one. You're so out there. The soul is out there. The soul is outside of the experience trying to come back in, <laughs> trying to get our attention. <laughs> we are all crazy. Let me just name that right at the beginning. Well, at the end of the podcast, I'll name that. We are all crazy, every one of us. Crazy implies doing something unexpected, doing something outside of the box, doing something that is not normal. The norm in the collective humanity right now is crazy. <laughs> the way people are living, have been living and thinking and processing and the, the objects of our attention, those are crazy and yet we call that normal. And what is happening now is this, this flip, this turning of perspective, this exploring things from another angle. What if it's crazy to go back to what was normal? What if normal now is what used to feel like crazy back then? <laughs> right? <laughs> Doesn't your mind want to go, what? <laughs> what is she saying? <laughs> My friend sent me this awesome video. <laughs> it was this woman for three or four minutes. She faked a press conference and she's standing there just talking constantly about you know, stay at home. The order for stay at home is to stay at home unless you don't want to stay at home and then don't stay at home. And if you, if you want to go out, we'll go out, but only go out if you're going <laughs> to, it was so funny <laughs> because there are so many voices and messages and authorities that are bringing all this information to our mind and our bodies are just tired. Our minds are tired. And the soul is trying to show us how out of alignment it all is. How do we get back to alignment? How do we find our way to the optimal health of the mind, body, soul? It's going to be unique for every single one of us. The best guidance I can offer is feel, feel in your body where you're not at ease and start there. Find some time to be quiet. Allow your mind a rest and then start to listen for those little inner nuggets of guidance. It's, it feels, well, this is my experience of it. Yours may be totally different, but for me, it's like this thought will just pop into my mind that it has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> it's out of nowhere. There's this thought. And then I can't stop thinking about that thought. That's usually the soul. It's the soul saying, here, this. This is what can guide you next. And it's random. It's always random. So for example, if... I'm trying to think of a good example for you. If your mind and your body are fatigued, and you sit, and you're just being really still and you're just focusing on your breath and you're relaxing your muscles and there's no noise coming in your ears and maybe there's a fresh breeze because you chose to sit outside for a few minutes and so you're just feeling the breeze and it's just moving around your body and maybe the sun is like warm on your head or your shoulders and then all of a sudden this image comes to your mind 
of when you were younger or a relationship you were in or maybe a picture of someone is suddenly in your mind's eye you know someone you love or someone you want to heal things with your soul has just given you a little nugget and often what the mind will do is I don't want to think about that I don't have time to think about that I'm too busy to think about that and so the mind tries to push that away to keep us in the normal state we are used to which is high adrenaline constant movement If we are sitting at ease, breathing, and this thought comes in from out of nowhere, encourage your mind to just allow the thought to expand. So instead of brushing it to the side, breathe into that thought. Breathe into the awareness that is coming in for you. What is it? Why would my soul show me this person without judgment, right? Discern, discern why your soul would show you that. Use all of your senses to go, I wonder why, that's one of my favorites, I wonder why this would come to my mind. Or perhaps your mind is rested and your body is at ease and then all of a sudden there's a jab that you feel in one part of your body or there's a muscle spasm or you feel a tightness somewhere get curious about what energy am i storing or blocking in that part of my body why would that suddenly get my attention when i'm sitting here breathing and i'm peaceful and then this jab happens I wonder why. When you start asking questions like that, I wonder why my soul would bring my attention to that part of my body. You'll find that the mind starts to get curious too. Like, I do wonder why. (laughs) I wonder why the soul would bring that forward. (laughs) What do I need to do about that? How do I solve that problem? (laughs) Right? And suddenly the mind is engaged body is rested and the mind is engaged and the soul is now part of the conversation it's a new way to feel our fullness the fullness of the soul in the human body and for many it's very unfamiliar so you just begin you begin where you are Maybe when you go to bed at night, you just go to bed 10 minutes earlier and just rest in your bed and allow your mind to sort through the day and, you know, sift through the priorities and then imagine your muscles can relax and you just release some of that tension. And then perhaps, here's a crazy thought, perhaps you invite your soul to really come forward while you sleep to do some healing in the mind and the body. Give the soul an assignment. And when you wake up the next morning, allow yourself to just lay there for an extra few minutes. Don't jump out of bed. (laughs) Lay there for a few minutes and just feel what's happening in your body. Is your soul trying to bring forward a dream that can guide you today? Is your mind trying to push that aside with the task list that it's ready for you to start challenging yourself with? (laughs) (laughs) Right? (sighs) Those task lists. What if the soul had this beautiful memory while you were resting? Of a time in this life or another life where you were fully at peace. Where you were one with all where you were part of a humanity where the soul was in such high vibration creation and love were flowing in ways that are inconceivable in this moment but your soul is tapping into that experience you have already had that you know and so your soul can bring that knowledge that vibration that peacefulness into your new day wow (laughs) that's a crazy way to start a day (laughs) so here we are May 1st all kinds of uh, emergence plants (coughs) 
<coughs> if I cough, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> all kinds of ways that humanity is going to start emerging back into connection, community. We're going to start perhaps seeing people more than we have or being in closer proximity with more people than we have. And we're going to phase it. We're going to do it in stages. But there still is this coming back together energetically and physically that is going to start happening. Your ability, my ability, our individual ability to discern what most serves the optimal health of my mind, body, spirit. How do I align with that? How do I move with that? How do I bring that steadiness, that clarity into my immediate quarantine community? And then from that collaboration, bring our collaborative steadiness into a larger community. And so all of us are um, expanding, rippling our steadiness out. We're honoring our individual optimal health, which as we do that, sends the ripples out to all others that we honor their individual optimal health. And we're all going to co-create from this place of oneness, community, collaboration. So the most important uh, beginning point is your individual optimal health your ability to understand what it is your soul is guiding you towards. Your ability to rest your body when you need it, to honor what your body's guidance is. And to allow the mind, the clarity, the space. <laughs> it's the only word I can think of. Allow your mind the space to trust what your soul is offering. When we are each in such beauty with the soul within, the soul of humanity has no choice but to start to shift because there is no hollowness at the very first individual level. Each one of us are filling ourselves up with ourselves. And then the soul of humanity is filled up too. So, discerning. Yeah, May 1st, it is going to be an incredibly powerful month. I send you just so much love and um, appreciation for your willingness to pause and be in this exploration with me and to trust how you are guided to move from here. All right, I will see you back here next week, Friday. Thank you for tuning in to this vibration of pure love. I invite you to join me on Sunday mornings for an hour of meditation, visualization, and energy healing, where we realign our mind-body-spirit with Gaia and Source. You can learn more at mysouljourney.com. Let's take this message of Gaia's love out into all of our relationships and communities today. So much love from my heart to yours.